So exposure to elevated levels of particulate air pollution uh, leads to adverse health effects. Um, most notably is to the lungs. So for example, uh, asthma, COPD, lung cancer, these sort of conditions are associated with exposure to elevated levels of air pollution. And the reason for this is that the lungs are the part of your body that's being exposed. Now, interestingly, heart attacks and strokes are also associated with exposure to elevated levels of particular air pollution. And like, why? Now, some people have argued and shown that um, air, pollution, air pollution particles are very small and as such they can pass through the lungs and work their way into the bloodstream and in doing so cause harm. Now this is true, but the particles don't have to pass all the way through the bloodstream to cause harm. So the story of how particular air pollution leads to cardiovascular diseases is much more complicated and in a lot of ways much more interesting. Okay, first things first, let's define some terms. Specifically, what I'll be talking about today is how the inhalation of particulate air pollution affects human health mechanistically. When I say particulate air pollution, in this video, what I mean is the insoluble particles that are suspended in the air. These particles are produced various ways through processes such as fire smoke, diesel exhaust, and cigarette smoke. These particles range in size from nanometers through to microns. Shown here is the relative size scale to give you an idea of how small we're talking about. The chemical composition of these types of aerosol and how they are produced are highly variable and the subject of another video. Okay, so that's the particle side of the ledger. Now let's talk about the other side. When we talk about cardiovascular disease, what are we actually talking about? When you have a heart attack or stroke, what is actually happening? What are the processes involved? What matters? What doesn't? A heart attack or stroke can occur when there's a blockage in a major artery. This blockage stops oxygenated blood from reaching either the heart or the brain, which leads to catastrophic events. For example, if oxygenated blood stops reaching the brain, the cells within the brain will begin to get damaged. The longer the blood flow is blocked, the greater the damage. For this reason, it's absolutely critical to seek treatment as soon as you recognize the signs of a stroke. Okay, so blockages in the arteries are a problem, but how does it happen? Now, there's this idea that what causes the blood flow to stop is when the plaque in the artery slowly grows and eventually seals it. This really isn't the case. Now, it is true that plaques in the arteries play a role, but it's not this way. Plaques, while obviously not good, are not a death sentence. The problem is, is when something causes the plaque to rupture. When this happens, either a clot will form at the site of the rupture, which results in a blockage and leads to a heart attack or stroke. Now, if the plaque fragment breaks away, it will form something called a thrombus. The thrombus will begin to travel down the artery. When the thrombus eventually runs into another area where the artery is smaller, so like another plaque, this will lead to the blockage. Now, in a general sense, the things that matter when it comes to cardiovascular disease are the things that affect the formation and growth of these plaques, things that affect how stable these plaques are, and the things that cause these plaques to rupture. Okay, so those are the processes occurring in the bloodstream that lead to someone to having a heart attack or a stroke. So the question then becomes, how does the inhalation of particulate air pollution lead to these processes occurring? Or to put it another way, mechanistically, how does exposure to elevated levels of particulate air pollution lead to cardiovascular disease? Three, how the body responds to inhaled particulate air pollution will largely depend on where the particles eventually land in the respiratory system. If they are deposited in the exothoracic region, so places like the mouth, nose, or throat, they are readily captured by the mucus and transferred by the cilia motion to the throat where they are swallowed. This significantly reduces the amount of damage caused by the inhaled aerosol as it is effectively removed by, from the respiratory system. If the aerosol makes it deeper into the airways, they are less effectively removed by mucosal clearance and thus are much more likely to reach the surface of the lungs. Once they land, the cells that are dosed will respond to their presence. Now, depending on the composition of the particle, the cell that is dosed will have a range of responses. 
particles land on respiratory cells will induce something called oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is an imbalance between free radicals and antioxidants that will lead to cell and tissue damage. Shown here is a summary of the many kind of chemical reactions that are involved. The oxidative stress paradigm describes how particular air pollution exposure causes a range of damage. Now, if the amount of oxidative stress caused by the inhalation dose is low, the cells that are dosed will initiate an antioxidant response. This limits the damage caused by the inhaled particulates. Now, if the dose is higher, or the composition of the particulates are such that they cause a larger, greater oxidative stress, the antioxidant defense is overwhelmed. This leads to a pro-inflammatory response, where the cells release molecular signals to help deal with this injury. This inflammatory response can be local to the lungs, where macrophages are being pulled in to remove the particles. Now, if the oxidative stress is high enough, the inflammatory response that is induced can become systemic, meaning that the response to the particulate dose goes far beyond the lungs and begins to trigger a response throughout the body. Finally, if the oxidative stress is high enough, this will lead to cytotoxicity or cell death. This will directly affect the function of the lungs. So when it comes down to how particulate air pollution leads to cardiovascular disease, it really is all about inflammation, either in the lungs or throughout the whole body. Now, as part of the healing process, inflammation can occur, and that's fine. So like things like a sprained ankle or an infection, inflammation can be helpful. The issue arises is when you have prolonged inflammation or you have inflammation in the absence of injury. When that happens, it can be quite the problem. When the body is in a state of systemic inflammation, this can lead to a lot of problems. Most notably is the production of these plaques. And these plaques are made of lipids, fats, and cholesterol, meaning that when you couple them with a fatty diet and exposure to elevated levels of air pollution, this will lead to an increased rate in this plaque formation. Not good. Now, as mentioned earlier, having plaques is in a death sentence, the problem arises when they rupture. Here's the thing. Exposure to particulate air pollution causes these plaques that are formed to be less stable and more prone to rupture. All right, so exposure to elevated levels of air pollution leads to an increase in the amounts of plaques formed and the structure of the plaques are less stable. Not good. And here's the thing, it gets worse. Inhalation of elevated levels of particulate air pollution will affect your heartbeat. Not only will the heart rate potentially change, but so will its rhythm. Atrial fibrillation is a form of arrhythmia, which is when the heart beats irregularly. This can cause fatigue or lightheadedness, and it can also cause the plaques in your arteries to rupture. Collectively, all of this means that exposure to elevated levels of particulate air pollution not only leads to the production of more plaques in one's arteries, these plaques are less stable. Added to that, air pollution causes one's heartbeat to change in a way that increases the likelihood of these plaques to rupture. In short, exposure to elevated levels of particulate air pollution damages a lot more than your lungs and in a variety of ways. At the end of the day, you cannot separate your cardiovascular system from the air that you breathe. With every breath, you're sampling the air, and if the air is polluted, you're going to be doing some degree of harm to either your lungs or your cardiovascular system or both. And if you do it for prolonged periods of time, it's going to be a problem. And so if you want better health, cardiovascular health, you're going to have to clean the air. Okay, so with that, I hope you found that interesting. If you like, please like. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below or ask me on Blue Sky or Twitter. And with that, uh, Mix has all the references that I used to make the video.